Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. You know what's even better? Tell your friends about it. Tell them all about the best wine show anywhere. I'm telling you, dude, it is. Trademark, by the way. All right, two weeks ago, I gave you some background information on Rias Baishas. Feel free to check out that episode to get the full story. Now, the short version is that Rias Baixas is in the Galicia region in Spain. It is located along the Atlantic Ocean in the far northwest part of Spain, and it sits directly over northern Portugal. It's best known for white wines made from Albarino. Winemaking has been happening there for about 2,000 years. However, Albarino hasn't been the main grape till after like 1900. Today's show is all about Adega David. Yeah, and that's really all there is to know about the wine. Uh, other than the wineries located in the Val de Sanes, oh, and they do something called thoughtful viticulture. Not sure what that means exactly. Let's put it this way. Their webpage is basically one long scroll divided into sections with vague information. It reads like a wine label, to be honest. Apparently, their grandfathers were making one in 1902, and then at some point, a grandmother handed over to us, or handed over what, when, I don't know. Fast forward to 2003, they built a new winery on the family property, and then it's signed by the two proprietors as if we should know who they are. I mean, the tech sheet really has the only information into what their winery is about. But here's the thing, it's for the 2018 vintage, with a bottle shot of the 2017, and then when you look at the URL, it says 2019 in it. All right, so... Here are the stats. Hopefully they are really for the 2019 and not for the 18 or 17. All right. The 2019 Adega David Observador. Suggested retail price, 40 bucks. Rias Baixas is the official appellation on the label. So what about Val de Sanes? The bottle doesn't say, but the website says they are there in Val de Sanes and imply they use their own vineyards on the same site. Why they don't put that on there, I don't know. It is a blend of 50% Albarino and 50% Godeo. Granitic soil, vine age over 25 years old, organic and biodynamic practices. They use native yeast. Lees contact nine months in stainless with batonnage. It just means they, they, they kind of stir up the wine, stir up the lees, so you get that really great contact with lees instead of just sitting on there. Uh, they also have, they quote, they also have on the tech sheet, it says, quote, Great potential for evolving in the bottle. Actually, that's from the website and no other explanation for that. And then the alcohol is 13%. The total acidity is 6.4 grams per liter. The pH is 3.32 and check it out. Production is a minuscule 277 cases. So thank you to the people that sent me all this. Um, they, they sent me the three Rias Baixas wines. This was really good. Uh, I think what happened is this particular wine, if I remember correctly, I had wanted some other wine and they had run out. We had a bit of, um, it didn't, the wines didn't show up when I thought they were going to show up and there was no tracking numbers and it took a little while, it took a while to get the wines. So I believe this was the wine that was a substitute wine. So I'm excited to try this wine I've never had an Albarino that's been more like 20-ish dollars, so I'm excited to try it. The only thing I'm really disappointed about, if you can't tell already, is that the website really has nothing. And when I contacted the person who, who sent me the wine, I was like, hey, you know, there's really nothing here as far as information. Is there something you can, like, give me? And she ended up giving me the same text sheet that I downloaded from the website. So I was kind of hoping that being that they were the PR company for it, they would have maybe like some other backstory, but that's okay. It could be just the winery doesn't give them anything other than just what the website says. All right. 
this might be a, uh, this might be, depending on how good this wine is, a tasting group wine. My next tasting group uh, hosting, which you're seeing this well after that, is in a few weeks. And I've already pulled the wines for that. But if this wine's like killer, and I only took that much out of it, there's plenty for tasting group. And I can see bringing this. So let's check it out. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try this. All right, so color-wise, well, first of all, we got all, this, all the bubbles from, from the Corvin. Call it a medium minus yellow. It's not like golden necessarily, but yellow. We've got, uh, really it's just yellow. And they, they didn't give us any, didn't give us any aging, just stainless steel. Yeah. So no, no oak, just stainless. Let's check it out. It smells good. So medium minus on the aromatics is definitely youthful. We definitely get a, a good amount of orange in this. White flowers. I don't really get any salinity on this, but orange, orange blossom, white flowers. I'm going to check here occasionally, make sure everything's working. I think one of my videos, I forgot to hit the, hit the record button on this. So I apologize if that, that video would have already happened by now. I apologize if the audio was crappy. Anyway, I think it was actually for, I think it was actually for this wine that I, I don't know if I test, which is like wine number two of the whole series that I'm doing. I mean, it's legit wine. Tastes really good. This feels like, even though it doesn't say there's any oak aging, there feels like there's, it's gotta be the Lee's contact. When you're doing batonnage, which none of the wines, well, actually, yeah, I don't think any of the wines I'm, I've done and I'm doing in this session have batonnage. Actually, this one, and, and I haven't tried it yet and I don't remember my notes on it. This one's Sir Lee, so this may have had some batonnage on it. It's actually one of the last wines I'm gonna taste. So, um, Hopefully, past me told future me what the deal was on that. But um, there's definitely a richness to it. And that's what Lee's Aging will do. I don't smell or taste the Lee's, per se, which I've been mentioning all along, all these all these things I've been uh, reviewing when I'm talking about Lee's Aging. I mean, if I'm searching for it, there may be a little bit of that stale beer thing going on on the aroma. I mean, I kind of get that. There's kind of like this... Not carbonation, but there's, yeah, like a carbonation thing, almost like, like you smell from a beer, but it's because I'm looking for it. To me, it's all about the richness of the wine. It's acting like it's got a little bit of oak aging when it really doesn't. And it's, as far as oak aging, not from the flavors, but from uh, richness. Also acting like it has, has some mallow lactic going on here, which they don't mention mallow on here. Which is fine. You don't need mallow to, to do that. But it tastes really good. It tastes well made. Does it taste like a forty dollar Albarino, like a forty dollar Riespaisis? I don't know. This is the most expensive Riespaisis wine I've ever had that I can remember having, and I have no reference. I don't know what, but. I can tell you as far as my perception of quality, it is probably one of the best Rias Baishas wines I've ever had. So given the type of farming they're doing, hand harvesting, which is actually required in Rias Baishas, um, but the fact that there's a lot about, I mean, it's, it's hard to read into what actually is going on, but from what I could tell from the, from the webpage, and from the text sheet, there's a lot of attention to detail being done in the winery and in the vineyard. I'm making a lot of guesses here. And $40, I mean, you think that there's definitely some stuff. Plus, 277 cases. That's not a lot of wine. And that's one reason why things are kind of expensive. Which is another Freestyle Friday episode. I don't know if it's already been happening by the time you see this or it could be a future episode. But... There's, oh no, yeah, you, you should have seen it. Yeah, because I did the whole six, the six cabs. Talked all about why wine is priced the way it is. So one of the reasons why this wine is a $40 bottle of wine, just regardless of where it's from, 277 cases. Rarity plays a part in how much a wine is worth 
and what it's going to be priced at. Other than that, there's probably some expensive winemaking going on here. I don't know how much the actual grapes cost or the value of the grapes on their land, if that's what we're doing, but we're talking, you know, 25 year old vines, right? Yeah, over 25 years old. So you've got low, you're gonna have lower yields just because they're older vines. They're not quite old vines. Old vines are kind of 35 and above, but there's no legal definition, no worldwide legal definition, but most of the places that have old vines, well, they when they define it is 35 years or older. It's well-made. It's well-made. I like it. I think, I don't know if I would bring this to tasting group as, as a classic example of a Rias Baixas wine. I would bring this instead because this is absolutely classic or this one too. All three of these wines were from the same, for the same uh, PR firm. And I mean, I thank you so much for sending them to me. This one might be something that I'm probably just, I, I might bring to Wednesday night theory group because uh, we do, we do theory and we just drink. Uh, instead of like Monday morning tasting group where we are tasting our wines and then we do a little bit of theory. This might be something I bring for a Wednesday night. Just be like, hey, let's let's experience this where I only have like two or three people to to do it with, whereas my tasting group is like eight to ten people. So we there's less people to enjoy it rather than just like you're getting two ounces. Anyway, it's a well-made wine. If you can drop 40 bucks on this, I suggest you do it. If nothing else, it's a little bit unique. The bottle looks pretty killer. I know it, it's, it's, it looks like a black bottle. It is a black bottle, pretty much. But I think it's a killer wine. It's expensive. I mean, it's not cheap. So if you want something that's a little unusual, a little different, and you've got 40 bucks to spend, and you can find this wine, do it, man. Why not? Live a little. Nothing wrong with those other two Albarinos I did. You know, they're under 20 bucks. They're killer, right? This is like that next level boutique style uh, Rita Spices. So check it out. I don't think I'm going to spit the rest of this. As I look at these last four bottles I still have to do for the night. Yeah, well, you know, that's going to do it for the wine. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Until then, tell all your friends. Until next time, drink some $40 Rita Spices, man. Cheers.